What up guys, Victor here, and the fish that I have in my hands are hogfish. Two of the most beautiful and tasty fish you guys can possibly get your hands on. The clips you guys are about to see are of I and my girlfriend and our really good friend's adventure of shooting them underwater, our wonderful trip to the Bahamas. Let the clips roll. All right, so the first clip you guys are seeing is of a female hogfish that I actually shot. And a cool thing that a lot of people don't know is that all hogfish start out as females and don't turn into males till about three years old. Now in this clip, I was going down and I saw a bunch of spiny lobster under this rock, but it was not seasoned in the Bahamas, so we had to let him go. And then out of the corner of my eye, Brooke saw a massive male hogfish. One way to tell the difference between a male and female hog, such as the one that Brooke shot, is the mouth. You guys are about to see the absolute just gargantuan mouth on these things. It is insane. One thing you guys will notice in this video is that hogfish are actually very curious and they will let you get rather close to them. So as you guys see in this clip, Brooke is going down, she shot a hog and it actually got off of her spear and what they'll do is, most of the fish that we shoot, if they get off the spear, they will go to the near structure because you gotta think they're in safety mode, they're in defense mode, so this hog in particular went to the nearest rock. Now generally we see hogfish out in the open either hiding under a sea fan or just on the reef eating some coral, but in this particular clip you guys are seeing my buddy Brando, he actually spotted a hog inside the rock and this is actually pretty common too. Here's another perfect example of how hogfish are actually really curious and they'll let you get pretty close to them. They kind of just keep sideways parallel to you and they'll just kind of scope you out and they're always looking in the back of their eye, but this guy wasn't so fortunate. And then sometimes hogfish are just plain flat out dumb and they'll just charge you like this one did in this clip. This is probably my favorite situation. I love it when hogfish think they can outsmart you and you can see as I'm getting closer that there's a hogfish hiding in the sea fan and what they'll do is they'll actually change their color perfectly to where you can barely see them from on top unless you get really close to them. All right guys, welcome back to the filet table and check out this here hog snapper, otherwise known as a hogfish. By the time you guys are done watching this video and watching all of the videos on this channel, you guys are gonna be informed on every single fish species we got here in Florida because I plan on catching them all and cooking them all. This is the reason they call them a hogfish because look at that mouth. This is a little female hog and her mouth is already that big. Now Brooke, right over here, my girlfriend, she shot the biggest hogfish of the trip and it was a giant male hog. Now that thing's head was bigger than your head, wasn't it? Yeah, it was giant. <laughs> Insert picture right here of it up to my face. <laughs> yes, and that was a male hog. The mouths on those things are just gnarly and they get a lot bigger than these females right here. But both of them are very mighty tasty and these are just such a pretty fish and just pretty fish to swim with underwater. And I hope you guys enjoyed the spear fishing footage. You guys don't see it that often on the channel, but I will be doing a lot more of it. And the craziest thing about these guys is when you do spot them, they are very easy to shoot. They are pretty dumb. They have these little tiny peck fins and they kind of just prance around on the reef. It's actually really funny. They kind of just prance around on the reef like this and they got this mouth with these little teeth and you'll see them fully extend it and they just go ahead and eat all the little crabs and shrimp and stuff on the reef. But they are master camouflagers. I'm talking guys, these guys will being, go from being pale ghost white and the only thing that gives them away when you're up top is this little black dot right here. And then when they're around a sea fan or some kind of coral or rock, they will turn into the color of the rock or whatever it may be. They are very good at disguising themselves. Time to flay them up. And guys, grandma is gonna love this fish because it is not fishy whatsoever. Very white, very flaky meat, all around good fish. I think as long as you miss the rib cage when you're taking it off, you don't have it. Nope. See, I took it. I didn't take it off. Let's do a little stomach check on this guy and see what he's been eating. Oh man. All right, so you guys know how he told you that he eats a lot of shrimp and crabs and stuff on the reef? Well, if you guys look, this is all sand and just bits of crushed up shells and bits of crushed up coral. Listen to it. I think you guys could probably hear that on the camera. 
It is just a bunch of hard, shelly stuff. Time to skin this guy up. It's really important when you're skinning fish to have a, something with a thick blade. Something that you have power to really separate the uh, skin from the uh, flesh of the fish. Beautiful. And check that out. Beautiful white flaky filet. Really expensive in stores. But we went out, did it in the wild, caught our own, and we're going to cook them up. And another reason people like these fish, I want you guys to try to even spot any bit of bloodline. There's no bloodline on this fish whatsoever. So not only does this guy not have any bloodline, but it has barely any bones as well too. So you get a lot of meat off of these fillets. And if you guys notice that a lot of these fish, such as hogfish, permit, pompano that I've filleted in the past, um, they have really big rib cages for the, sh the fish that eat crabs and crustaceans and stuff. So when I'm filleting, one thing Brooke and I have been doing and noticing is you really try to go around this rib cage and not try to separate it so it doesn't become part of your fillet and have to cut it out later. You kind of just feel for it right there and you try to go above it. What up Land Shark Nation, Chef Vic coming at you with another catch and cook. Now in today's video I'm preparing hogfish which is a real delicacy for us Floridians to have and not many of us get to eat this fish unless you go down and shoot them underwater with either a gun, pole spear or sling which we did in the Bahamas which was a ton of fun. I absolutely love spear fishing, getting in the water, seeing fish and how they interact with each other. I, I say it's a real delicacy because hogfish traditionally are not taken on hook and line. It is something you usually have to go underwater and shoot which is is really cool because you kind of it's almost like you're hunting more so than you are fishing which is definitely a different aspect to this channel and I hope you guys enjoy it we're gonna do a coconut crusted hogfish with a tropical rum sauce paired with some grilled zucchini and squash and of course the banana fritters that you guys saw in that last video were to die for so I'm gonna go ahead and do the banana fritters again starting with our pineapple rum sauce I just got some Captain Morgan here a dark spiced rum I'm gonna do a quarter of a cup And now just some pineapple nectar. And we'll do three quarters of a cup of this pineapple nectar. A quarter cup of honey. And now to spice it up a little bit, we're gonna do some crushed red pepper. And we're gonna bring this guy to a boil and then immediately reduce him down and simmer him. The banana fritters were definitely one of my favorite parts about the Bahamas cuisine. They were a really just sweet delicacy to eat. And I got six bananas here. Next up for our banana fritters, we're gonna do two cups of all-purpose flour. In case anyone was wondering, here's the consistency of the banana puree. Still got chunks in it, but you can definitely see it's a very soupy type mixture. Now I got two teaspoons of vanilla extract, two tablespoons of cinnamon, and a teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm just gonna add whatever's left in this bag that I have of brown sugar in there. Right around half a cup. Then we'll do about a quarter cup to half a cup of milk, depending on how I want that consistency. Now to get started on our fish, I just got a bowl of flour here. I'm going to season up the flour. Those are going to get dredged. Our fillets are gonna get dredged in that flour. Got some black pepper, some salt, and garlic powder. Very simple. All right guys, check out this beauty right here. So here's the hogfish, and it is actually pretty rare, at least I don't find it very often, that you get a very flaky yet firm fish such as this. Hogfish is one of those fish, and it's very easy to work with, fries up well, it holds its composure, it holds its texture, not fishy great all-around fish to work with. So all of my fillets are gonna get dredged in this flour very lightly. Now to get our coconut crusted fish, I got some sweetened coconut flakes right here from my local grocery store, Publix, greatest grocery store on earth. And I have some panko breadcrumbs. I'm gonna do an equal mixture of my coconut flakes to my panko breadcrumbs. Make sure it's mixed. Got a perfect blend of panko and coconut. 
Now that we got our coconut mixture made, we're gonna go straight from our fish fillet into our egg batter, into our panko coconut, which is gonna be so delicious, guys. I'm gonna go over it repeatedly to make sure I get every little, every bit of fish coated. So check it out, here is my rum sauce. And you guys see how it's kind of a real syrupy, thick glaze. It's goopy, I'm gonna take it off the heat, let it cool down, and it'll get even thicker. And we go. Looks like our first batch of fritters is done, and look at that beautiful golden brown color. There we go, the oil is hot enough for the fish. Time to get these coconut guys in there. And that's the sound I look for every time I put fish into oil. Woo, look at that color. Check it out guys, here is the banana fritter. This time I went ahead and did powdered sugar plus cinnamon. Here is the strawberry glaze from last uh, week's Catch and Cook. The hogfish with a beautiful brown coat, coconut crusted, and here is that tropical rum spicy sauce with crushed red pepper, our zucchini and the squash. Now we got the real part, and that's the taste test. So what does everyone think? Yep. Very good fish. Very good fish. Banana pancakes, good. Better than last time? Yes. Aha, we're learning. And grandma? Very good. Very good? Yeah, leave me eat. That's how you guys know it's good when someone tells you to leave them alone and eat. All right guys, my dad has the camera and I'm gonna go ahead and do a taste test and see if this coconut lives up to its name. The coconut flavored fish, dipping it in the rum sauce. Mm-hmm. So the coconut, it's not, it's not like you're eating coconut dessert or coconut cake. It's just this real subtle, it gives it a crunchiness to the fish and it makes it sweet. It makes it really pop. It's not an overbearing, really just sweet sensation. You'd think that it'd make your fish a lot sweeter and like you're eating dessert, but it does not. Now the rum sauce is fire and it's also a little bit spicy because I put in those crushed red peppers and all those juices from the crushed red peppers, red peppers just got dissolved in that sauce. It's a real syrup, syrupy glaze. My grandma did an awesome job with this zucchini. Perfectly done in the oven. Now let's go ahead and give the banana fritters a try. One thing I like about this time, I was able to improve on the recipe. I put in more banana and the more banana made a difference. I love the taste of banana and it, it makes it fluffier, it makes the inside of the banana fritter really come alive because you're eating a banana fritter, you want to taste banana. And I think last time I had too much flour, but this time it had just the right amount of banana. So this dish was thumbs up, you guys gotta try it. It's a good way to spice in up a plain old boring fried fish. If you guys have never tried coconut crusted fish, very easy. All you gotta do is add in some coconut flakes to your panko breadcrumbs and it makes a world of difference kind of makes it seem way more gourmet than it is. Those banana fritters, definitely gonna be a staple in my kitchen from now on. Zucchini, squash, the sauces, everything was so good. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this one, make sure to subscribe, because if you guys made it this far, you probably should be subscribed by now. And until that next one, stay salty, and I'll see you in the next video. Her body's gold like September. She burns through the night like an ember. And all those things we try forgetting, I remember. But we say we all fine, we all fine. Sunny day dreams, and we up now. Vodka lemonade, I serve it up, it goes down. Seven